Hello, today I've got something a bit uh, strange for you. Um, I'm playing around with a floppy disk drive. Now, as you may remember, about a year ago I did a video where I uh, duplicated a rather odd formatted, oddly formatted floppy disk, and as part of that I did a bit of digging into you know, how do floppy disks actually work on a sort of more physical level and you know, the encoding used on those guys and, and that sort of thing. And ever since then I've been playing with this and it's been sort of in and out of my drawer a couple of times and um, I, I figured I should do a video at some point because otherwise it's, you know, it, this is one of those things that will never get finished anyway. So I thought I'd just give yourself a quick uh, overview of the kind of madness that I've been up to. Now the basic idea behind what I'm trying to achieve is to effectively store non-digital data on a floppy disk. And you know in principle that's very simple because you know a floppy disk is a magnetic medium and there is no reason why you shouldn't be able to store analog data directly on there like you would on a um uh, you know on a magnetic tape or something and indeed nothing stops you from taking a floppy disk drive like this and accessing the heads directly and storing analog data. Um, but that's actually not what I'm interested in because it's a bit boring. Um, I'm interested in actually storing analog data without modifying the disk at all and using the digital interface and I'll explain to you in a second um, why it actually works and one way um, of achieving that. Compared to hard drives or at least modern hard drives, um, floppy disk drives are extremely stupid. Um, they have no concept of you know, data as such or even disk geometry. Um, if you take a modern hard disk for example, you know, it knows where to find data on the surface of the disk and it will do all the decoding and encoding for you. So if you tell a hard disk to you know, store a byte somewhere, it will find the right location on the surface of the disk, uh, you know, move the head there and you know, write a magnetic pattern there that represents the byte that you asked to. Um, floppy disk drives don't do any of that. They are literally a analog front end or digital front end to the surface of the disk. So all you have is a bunch of control lines for moving the head back and forth on the surface of the disk and you have a read and a write data line. Now the important thing to realize is the read and write data are just sort of cleaned up versions of the of the magnetic uh, signals on the disk itself. So for example on the write signal whenever you um, have an edge on that the drive will write a pulse to the disk and likewise whenever the drive reads a change in magnetic field it will output a pulse on the read line. Um, so it's really entirely up to the disk controller to interpret the data and encode it in a way that makes uh, that makes sense for that particular uh, format. Now just to demonstrate I've got in the drive at the moment a um, floppy disk and that's a hopefully still good disk that has actual computer data stored in it and if we just turn on the drive and effectively just read the same track over and over I can show you on the oscilloscope what that actually looks like on the read line. Ah, oh, yes, that looks good. Um, so basically what I have on the top, let's make this a bit bigger, so the yellow signal, that is the index pulse. Now all the index pulse does is every revolution of the disk, it goes low for a couple of milliseconds, so it allows you to synchronize your data and the sort of blue, um, very fuzzy line is the data output line. So if we look at basically what happens right after the right after the edge of the index pulse, you can see there is a bit of uh, random stuff happening because so if you actually look at the disk format specifications and the way it's supposed to work is there's a bit of a dead bend here. And then here you've got uh, synchronization pulses that allows the PLL of the disk control to lock on. And then after that you start to have, you know, your real data. And you can see because we're reading the same track over and over, you know, that is the same every time. Now the important thing to realize here is that 
yes, this looks like a digital stream, and it is a digital stream, it is not a bit stream as such, so there is inherently no clocking or no concept of bits in there. So every edge or every pulse you see here is just whenever the head moves past a change in magnetic field on the surface of the disk. Um, so it is really just whatever the controller put on there and because say IBM PC is standardized on a certain way of putting stuff on the disk they can talk to each other through that um, you know common disk format but inherently there is no data or no concept of bits clocking or anything in there it's just whatever happened to be put on a disk and this is where my um, sort of idea for storing analog data comes in so if you do look at a spec sheet for a floppy disk drive or a disk controller like the controller that's on the disk drive um, you'll find that there's a very wide range of acceptable timings for those pulses because as I said they don't need to uh, you know match any particular bit timings they just happen to uh, need to work with the uh, with the modulation demodulation um, electronics on there on the disk drive itself so my idea is to feed in a a clock signal or a a square wave signal effectively that has a nominal frequency and the idea is to then frequency modulate that with a message signal and that should work quite well because as I said all the disk drive will do is whenever there's an an edge in the signal it will put down something on the disk and then reading back again whenever there's something on the disk it will create an edge so the frequency modulation in an analog manner should be preserved by um, by a disk drive and that's what I want to demonstrate here so what I have on this extremely neat breadboard is some control logic to control the disk drive so that's moving the head um, forward and backwards and also controlling which side of the disk I'm reading from because I want to store as much as possible on a single disk I am using both sides of the disk so when I write to it I write um, say track 0 head 0 and then track 0 head 1 then move to the next track and do track 1 head 0 track 1 head 1 and so on um, so maximum storage on the disk is 32 seconds of of signal. I've also got on here a phase lock loop that takes care of the modulation and demodulation. So uh, again if I modulate the input signal comes from here an audio connector into the VCO, output of the VCO goes onto the um, floppy disk and in reverse the output of the floppy disk goes into the PLL that locks onto the signal and picking off the VCO control voltage that then goes into the little audio amplifier and uh, a crusty little speaker here so we can all hear the beautiful sounds that um, are stored on the floppy disk now to demonstrate I have here a well possibly not blank but anyway a floppy disk I can put it in there and just to show you what I will store on the disk so that is currently the VCO control voltage of the PLL and if I switch the um, disk drive on hopefully the FM modulated version of that signal will get stored on the disk. Now what I need to do for that is I need to return the disk to track 0 if it wasn't there already and it seems it is and all I need to do is turn on recording stop that from moving, turn on our source Turn on the disk, let the disk move, and in theory, this thing should now be writing FM data to the disk. And if you look here, you can see the head of the disk uh, drive slowly make its way towards uh, track 80. So let's just wait a couple of seconds until this is done. Right, so we hit the end of the disk. So now let me move the head back. And now if I switch the PLL over to demodulate, which I do over here, oops, I should in theory be able to play that back.
So that seems to work, and just to show you that I'm not cheating, I can unplug the audio source and again reset that and play. Um, as you can hear, um, there is a sort of constant beating noise, and that is a very annoying property of all the floppy drives that I tried out. Um, which is that during the sync pass that I've shown you in the scope, they actually output no valid data. So even though you can write to them to the disk during the um, during the sync pulse, it actually won't output data during that time. So you get this uh, periodic um, loss of your signal, and because I didn't send a PLL properly, uh, it just means that you get that 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 sort of beating noise in there, which is quite annoying but really I can't really be bothered to do it properly because I think it proves the principle quite well. Now also just to show you again how neat that is in my opinion is you know I've got this disc here which I just recorded. Here is a disc which I recorded earlier so I put that disc in reset it and again So you can see it's, you know, you literally have your analog signal on a floppy disk using the digital interface of the disk drive, which I think is the is the neat part of that. Um, so anyway, I, I just thought I'd share it with you. Um, it's obviously one of those completely useless um, <laughs> um, uh, weekend uh, weekend killers, but um, you know, so I, I think it's really quite neat that in principle or fundamentally you can use a unmodified floppy disk drive, unmodified disks that you store analog data on them which, you know, may not be the most obvious thing unless you actually have read, uh, read how, how the interface works and how the disk drives themselves work. So anyway, I hope you liked this uh, quick excursion into my um, drawer of um, ongoing projects and yeah, I'll hope to see you again next time. Bye!